What's going on guys, Linus here. Welcome back to Civilization 6 as China. In the China, in the previous part, we, uh, sorry, I just had to do that. In the previous part, uh, we settled the second city, which is Chengdu. Now we haven't actually made anything here yet. We're currently working on a monument, uh, which will increase our culture. Uh, and we're researching irrigation so that we can actually get, first of all, the, the dyes around the capital. And then also the spices near our second city. Uh, because those will give us extra amenities, uh, which if you look at our amenities right now, we have one out of one because we have a palace. And I guess that sort of... Okay, we have zero out of zero required. Uh, because only your capital gets a boost from that apparently. But once we get the dice, then we get one extra amenity uh, in luxury resources for both these cities. Basically, it's shared uh, one amenity or one luxury resource will give plus one amenity to four of your cities. Uh, that's basically how it works. I wasn't sure at first, but now I know that. Uh, and that's good. So we're gonna get the dyes. We're gonna get the spices here as well. Uh, but more importantly, we're gonna get a holy site. Which will give us a very nice amount of extra faith per turn. And with a little bit of work, it will actually ensure that we do get our own religion. Um... <laughs> She's already very unimpressed with us because her army is weak. I made more like 40 turns into the game and I've already made more units than I usually do. But still, she decided that she is very unimpressed with me. You know what? That's alright. I don't care what you think. Alright, so we're gonna get our builder back over here to grab the dies. Uh, this guy can actually, let's see, maybe send him up there a little bit. Not too far, just to make sure that it's safe and maybe see if there's something of interest there. Uh, because settling a third city is not something we want to do straight away. Uh, but obviously that is, uh, something that we are gonna have to consider. The man who has grit enough to bring about the afforestation or the irrigation of a country is not less worthy of honor than its conqueror. Alright, so that gives us access to the Hanging Gardens, which is the first wonder, I believe, that we really will want to get. Uh, and we can make plantations now, which is great. So, we're going to deal with that in a second. Alright. Oh, we got some pearls there. Alright, those are actually pretty rare. Uh, I've noticed there's still a lot of luxury resources from sort of Civ Five, uh, But some of them seem to be a little bit rare, or at least to me they are more rare than others. Like salt, I don't see that too much. Uh, wine, kind of the same. And pearls, I pretty much never see. So it's really cool uh, that we have, that we found some. We don't have some, but we found it and that's cool. Uh, now next up, our next research. We just finished irrigation and we have a lot of choices ahead of us, but I think I want to go with the wheel because that is going to allow us to make, uh, first of all, a water mill, which is great. And actually we do need to make one of those uh, to boost construction pretty soon and then making a heavy chariot is something that was actually requested of us by who was it? Carthage and they want us to get a scientist. That's not gonna happen anytime soon but the uh, the chariot should be uh, quite doable and obviously you know having a bigger military is good for defense and it's gonna make uh, Egypt like us a little bit better. Also I wanted to point out that I actually really like this new color scheme for Egypt. They have a completely different one, same as India actually. Uh, and they're both pretty unique, I like them. Yeah, they're really cool. Japan's kind of the same. Uh, China has slightly different hue of green, but it's still green. Alright, we're gonna grab that. So now, we have our holy site. Uh, right over there, and it's getting plus four faith per turn because of all the desert nearby. Uh, so that's a, a pretty good start. That's a nice amount of faith to begin with. And it also unlocks the shrine. So as you can see, buildings no longer get made in the in the city itself. Uh, but you need a district to actually put those buildings into. So a shrine can only be made inside of your holy um, site. Yeah, we also have access to the oracle, which is another great wonder that I would love to make. But the thing is that I do want to make sure... Uh, that we get the profit. Right now, nobody's really going after it, and India is going to be the first person to grab a profit. So I feel like a shrine is not really that big a deal. 
and not something that we need necessarily straight away. Uh, instead, I actually will want to start working on either the Oracle. Actually, yeah, the Oracle might be a great choice because that's going to give us plus two great person points of their type uh, for all districts in this city. So what that means is that instead of getting one great profit point every turn, uh, just because we have a holy site, we're going to get three. So we would actually be uh, the first person to get a religion if we manage to make this somewhat quickly. So I do want to do this. Must be built on hills. All right, here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to buy this tile because it's otherwise pretty bad. And I'm just going to build the Oracle on that hill. I mean, we're only getting one production from this tile and we're not actually going to miss this. So I'm going to make the Oracle there. Uh, and all we really need to do. Yeah, let's see. I think we're safe for the most part. Uh, so what we want to do is get a builder out there. Hello. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you on. That was a uh, pretty boring fight. I mean, they did well for a scout, but um, if I bought tickets to that show, I would be a little bit disappointed. There is no shame in deterrence. Having a weapon is very different from actually using it. Why, well, thank you, Gandhi. I'm not entirely sure what he means when he says that. Uh, I think that's sort of his... Um, Japan declared war on Carthage. Why? Why would you do that? I haven't done it yet, but I feel like declaring war on city-states doesn't really gain you all that much. Because the bonuses they would give you are, are much better than owning a city-state, so it's kind of weird. But uh, maybe I'm, I'm just not understanding it correctly. Alright, so Xi'an now needs more amenities. But we're actually about to get one right now. All right, so it didn't... All right, it's going to take a turn for it to actually realize that we have this uh, plantation now on the dies. It'll be all right. I'm going to go... Let's go here. Hey, we got some iron over here. All right, so this is already a pretty promising area where we could settle our third city. A lot of copper over here as well. This could be a spot for fourth city. I mean, really, in this game, you want to settle a lot more than you did in Civ 5. Very good, leave the exploring to me. I think that's a hidden agenda. Sometimes leaders really like exploring and they wanna make sure that other leaders do not explore as much as they do. Uh, that's just something they care about. It's kinda weird, but all right. Yeah, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna send this builder over to the Oracle straight away and just start rushing it a bit. And we're gonna get a second builder in Chengdu. And as you can see, by the way, we're growing again because we got that extra amenity just now. And Chengdu also has one extra amenity. Uh, more than they need, in fact, and that makes them happy and it makes sure that they uh, grow a little bit quicker. And even their non-food yields, so production, stuff like that, that's a bit higher as well. Uh, so amenities are important and having happy cities will make sure that your cities thrive uh, and not just in terms of growth. So that is something to keep in mind. What just happened? Toronto and Zanzibar. We just met to both of those. Where's Toronto though? Oh, here they are. All right, so Zanzibar wants a trade route, which is actually quite easy. We should be able to do that uh, pretty soon. And then uh, a great profit is obviously something that we are going to be working on. Uh, so that's good. That means that we should be able to do the quests that they asked me to do. All right. Yeah, this absolutely does look like a pretty suitable spot for a next city. Uh, lots of grassland. We got some iron, which is, you know, pretty uh, important to get that. Just so you can make swordsmen and th things of that nature. And uh, there's more spices. Sometimes the wheel turns slowly, but it turns. 
All right, so we got the wheel. We can actually uh, make water mills and uh, heavy chariots now. Politics is the art of the possible, the attainable, the art of the next best. Now this is the one that's actually a real big deal. Because it unlocks the first set of governments. Now they all give pretty um, different bonuses. Uh, so autocracy has, they also have different slots by the way. Autocracy is more militaristic. Um, it gives you extra boost to wonder production and your capital will receive a boost. A plus one boost to all yields. That's alright, it's not bad. Then there's one that says all land melee units gain plus four combat strength. And the longer you have this government, the more experience you will gain for your combat units. And Classical Republic, which uh, will give all cities with the district one amenity and you get extra great people points. Uh, considering... Who we are, I think we are going to want to go with a Classical Republic, at least for now. And you can change these around later. I mean, it's probably not the best idea, but you can do it. So I'm going to go with Classical Republic here. And we now have two economic policy slots. I love the builder one, so I'm going to keep that one in place. And I'm going to get, let's see, production towards wonders. Because that will actually speed up the wonder that we're building. In the diplomatic policy slot, we've got the first envoy you send to each city state counts as two. And plus two influence points per turn towards earning envoys. Uh, so that's actually quite good. That's a pretty large increase in the points. However... Uh, we've got three different city-states with uh, which we have zero envoys, so we might actually want to start out by using the, let's see, by using um, Diplomatic League for now, uh, and then we could get one of the great person um, policies as well, which will give us extra great profit points or scientist points. Seeing as we're trying to get a profit right now and we want to rush this I'm gonna go with that for now and this will ensure uh, that we will be getting our profit uh, as the first civilization because what we're basically getting three points per turn now so we're gonna be catching up to the others uh, incredibly quick uh, quickly and Leventa wants me to make a trade route as well I I'll do that soon enough and we're now gonna add production to the wonder and that's going to save us four turns. So that's actually really good. And that is China's unique ability right there in action. I'm just not really sure if we want to settle anywhere near the coast. We could settle down here. There's a lot of copper and there's some coffee. And then we would get a boost to our sailing, which, you know, that would be really useful. Uh, so actually, I'll start off with writing, which will give us the ability to make a campus, which is sort of your science district. And for our next civic, uh, the only thing right now that's actually really fast would be military tradition. And since we are actually building a wonder, we should be able to boost drama and poetry quite soon as well. Yeah, we're going to get a builder in uh, Chengdu. I'm going to leave this guy around here to hopefully deter other civilizations from uh, settling there. And this absolutely does look like a spot where I will want to settle. And I don't mind settling on the coast. If only to get that boost, because that's going to make it a lot easier for us to... Um, to check out the naval... sort of gameplay. So I'm going to... Rush again. There we go. And it's going to take us a while to get the next builder, but 12 turns is already quite all right. Uh, next time, though, we might actually want to prepare and get two builders ready, and then you can just rush to wonder in a couple of turns. And we just met Hattusha. All right. They want us to get a great merchant. And if we send at least one envoy, we are going to get a little bit of extra science for free. That's really nice. Uh, Toronto would also be really good. Extra production when making wonders, buildings, and districts. Uh, obviously would not be opposed to having that.
Japan just took Carthage. They they did not expand. They actually took Carthage out, uh, which I don't like because they were giving me a little bit of extra production there. So that's just a bummer. More than anything else, that is a bummer. All right, let's see. So again, this is definitely a very, very promising spot. There's lots and lots of different resources here. I think we just found our third city spot. And this continent is called Siberia. Writing means sharing. It's part of the human condition to want to share things. Thoughts, ideas, opinions. I don't underrate the value of military knowledge. But if men make war in slavish obedience to rules, they will fail. All right, so we just got a little handful of policies there. Uh, we can get extra production towards uh, cavalry, which we don't need right now. And we can get extra great general points. Which, let's see. Uh, a general basically gives your the units around it a little bit of a combat strength boost and apparently movement as well. And then you can also use them when you're kind of done with them and they will give a promotion to a military land unit. So they're all right. If you're going to war a lot, it does help to have them nearby. Uh, but again, it's, it's you know, also not the same uh, or the, the most important thing in the world. You know, I feel like for us, something like a, a well profit right now, but scientists, merchants, and engineers are going to be much more important uh, throughout the game. So I'm actually going to grab masonry right now. We're going to get the builder in five turns. Research construction. Yeah, it's not going to happen for a little while yet. I'm not entirely sure what the best course of action here would be. I guess I'll go with that one and just boost the, the last bit of it. Oh, there's even more. Alright, this is a just a prime spot because there's so many different resources around. If you settle here, you actually get all of this within your your area. Well, actually not the this these horses and the, the cattle, but you would still get this iron. And all of this would still be within your border, so that's actually really good. I absolutely do want to settle there. And there's barbarians, and I also forgot that village. That is completely my bad. I just realized it, alright. Let's see. I want to see if we can maybe slow this down a little bit. So we can still rush it one more time. And then just stop working this. The Pantanal is the most complex intertropical alluvial plain of the planet. And perhaps the least known area of the world. It's another natural wonder. It is a four-tile natural wonder. It appears as marsh. It provides plus two food and plus two culture. So... It's not bad. Also, it does look really cool. Alright, let's go back to that village before someone else grabs it. Nine turns remaining. I might actually just um, stop this one in a few turns. Let's see, this guy would have to get over there in two turns, that's not going to happen. Alright, that's kind of a bummer. I kind of wish that we had made a builder uh, beforehand. Because that would have made it a lot easier to just rush the wonder. Get the village. Go get it. What just happened? Oh, I didn't... Okay, I didn't show me what, the, what that was. Uh, that could have been... A civilization that we have not yet met that was defeated. It could also be a city-state that got taken out by someone. Each of us is carving a stone, erecting a column, or cutting a piece of stained glass in the construction of something much bigger than ourselves. Alright, so this is another nice research for us. 
or technology. Uh, because this will give us access to the Great Wall, so we can actually start working on that pretty soon. Um, it also gives us the ability to make the pyramids. These will give you a free builder, and all your builders can build one extra improvement. So that brings our builders to five. And it must be built on desert, including floodplains without hills. So that actually would be uh, pretty doable for us. And it looks like we are... Okay. Uh, it looks like we're out of housing in the capital. For now, we're just going to go at horseback riding. Seeing as we've already boosted it. Hello there. I'm just checking out this village. Do not be worried. Just scouting here. I just want to try and, sh and see as much of the map as we possibly can. Uh, we should probably also go up north a little bit more because there is still a bit more out there. I don't know how much, but there is more out there. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to halt construction on the Oracle once we have, let's say, five turns remaining to be safe. All right, so we're going to switch to games and recreation right now. And then... All right, this is going to be really tricky. Water mill is going to take too long. So we're just not going to get construction before we get games and recreation, sadly. But let's just start working on that for now. Let's just get a trader then. You go there. All right, so instead of the... Oracle, you can actually start working on, let's say, a granary now to add some housing. There we go. Oh, I got a free builder. Are you kidding me? That is karma. That is just karma right there. Just because I was an idiot, the game is now punishing me by... They're just torturing me by giving me a free builder. All right. Uh, so this will build the Great Wall. Plus for defense strength for occupying unit. Fortification bonus applied to occupying unit. Uh, we also want to make sure we get this tile though. We're going to have to wait one more turn and then we can actually work that. So I'm going to leave this guy here. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to... Oh, Japan already founded a religion. So they must have made Stonehenge then. And they did. They absolutely did. So you can sort of swoop in and steal a, a profit when everybody else is trying to, to go after him. Uh, you can just steal him. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to buy this stone. And we can actually see that he made Stonehenge right next to that stone. Good for him. We're going to start running towards the Oracle. Alright, actually fortify. Because I don't want to be murdered by a horseman. That is my nightmare. All right, yeah, we can boost this one next. Somewhat soon. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's go up there. See what else Japan is up to. All right, we're almost ready. And let's build a quarry here. Why would the game work that? I, I don't know. I honestly do not know. All right. And you can tell this the uh, the capital is actually grown really really slowly because we do not have enough housing right now. All right, we do have archery already. There must be an encampment somewhere around here. He's out of moves now. All right, at least he can protect the uh, the builder though, so it's not all bad. All right, there you go. Next turn. All right. Uh, we can actually finish the Oracle 
if all goes according to plan. And then we can also grab the rest of the uh, the resources. Well, at least the dies. And we do want to start working on a third settler then. No hour of life is wasted that is spent in the saddle. So we can now make stables and we can get horsemen. Even though we have no horses. So, you know, there is that little, little thing. Alright, make a trait route. We're actually about to get one in five turns so we can safely make this choice. Alright, you. We're gonna finish the Oracle, so he's gonna rush it. And there you go. Just like that, we are looking good. And we're gonna work the dyes, or the spices actually. Uh, which will give us one more amenity in every city that we actually need. So that's gonna be real sweet. And Japan has become an oligarchy, which means that they're not gonna like me because, you know, different governments and everything, that's... I sprang upon the swift ship in the form of a dolphin. Pray to me as Apollo Delphinius. Also, the altar itself shall be called Delphinius and overlooked forever. Yes, there we go. The Oracle has been created. Looks good. Uh, the glory of completing a wonder has energized your people. They are writing works to commemorate this great event. So we can now safely finish drama and poetry. I, uh... Did a, did a pretty alright job there. We can finish our granary here. Yeah, we're getting more great profit points than anybody else. Somebody's apparently really gone after that scientist, though. I'm guessing with that one policy that is out there. Unmet player has been defeated. Alright, where'd that... Okay, apparently the scouts just kind of ran away, although I do not know where. But yeah, he is gone. Alright, let's go check that out. It's like this whole area left that we haven't yet seen. Alright, so we finished the Oracle and that's all great. Uh, next up we can actually make the Hanging Gardens or the Pyramids. Even though we cannot make the Pyramids yet unless we probably buy one of these tiles. Although I'm not sure that I want to make that wonder. Uh, you basically don't want to make too many around your city because that means that there's going to be less tiles for you to actually work. Uh, which actually can be bad. So you want to keep an eye out for that as well. Alright. Looks good to me. Yeah, let's do that for now. Let's go get the other dies. And I think I would like to create the hanging gardens instead of the pyramids. Although, we might as well make a wonder in Chengdu instead of in uh, Xi'an. Like, you don't want to make all your wonders in one city. Just like you don't want to make all your districts. Stage, and all the men and women merely players. Just like you don't want to make all your districts in the, in the same city. That doesn't always work out uh, quite that well. So we're now getting... Yeah, we're getting more great profit points than anybody else. So I'm going to leave it as is for now. Although we are going to change our policies later. Uh, actually, we can get rid of this now. Let's get the one that gives us production to our settlers, because obviously we do want to get another settler pretty soon. I still don't know what Japan is doing out here. It's just got this weird army marching around. And they're not really doing all that much. I'm going to upgrade my slinger as well, by the way. Get some spices. And some dyes. Found a religion. We're going to get that, but that is a little further off than we would like. Build two campus districts. I mean, that's going to take a while to actually do. This one we can still boost quite easily. So I'm going to go with recorded history for now because I will not be building two campus districts, uh, let alone this early. Some of these boosts are just really uh, difficult to actually get. So Japan just declared war on Leventa. So it looks like he just really has it out for every city state out there. 
And basically he's becoming a little bit of a maniac. I'm not sure if I like that or not. Actually, I am sure that I do not like it. And I wish that he would stop. Alright, I think they just uh, killed the horseman that was plaguing me earlier. Here I go. He's made peace with Carthage, but... He owns Carthage, so I, I don't... Uh, understand how that works. If you could explain that to me, that'd be... That'd be pretty cool. Now, the game really wants me to make the Great Wall. But I'm a little bit worried that I'm gonna actually have to expand it a bit later. I'm just gonna make one part, though. Or am I? No, I'm not. I'm gonna save my builds for a wonder here. Uh, they just finished the granary, and we now have more housing that we need, so we're looking good. And we can move on to other projects, so we're gonna need a water mill. Uh, to get the boost to construction, so I'm gonna make that into capital. And just get that over with. I'm gonna send... Yeah, I'm gonna send this guy south as well. If we actually want to make the hanging gardens in the... let's see... He's willing to trade open borders, and he's going to give me a bit of cash for my extra dies. Seeing as I don't need the extra copy, that's alright. Another thing we could maybe do... Oh, he does not want to do that. Alright, I'll do just do it for his open borders and a little bit of cash. That seems alright. I'm not sure if I like him too much. Like, we're not really sure where our relationship is going right now. Although, you know, I'm pretty sure he's not going to be a horrible warmonger, but still, you, you got to be careful around Gandhi. Because you never know what he's going to do next. Alright, so you're going to sleep for now. In one turn, we're going to start making the Hanging Gardens in Chengdu. Just because we get some nice boosts to those early wonders, I want to make sure that I grab all of them. Uh, or all of those wonders that I actually really would like. Petro would be another good one, maybe, but we're not actually in the desert. Uh, the Great Lighthouse, another option. The Colossus I've actually never made. So I'm not too sure about that one. Alright, so this is all just Japan. Now, Levent is currently under siege. Also, we would be going through enemy territory while Zanzibar would be a, a lot safer because I know that Japan is guarding this area. So we can actually trade with them. As much as I would like that three faith from Leventa, I'm going to trade with Zanzibar because they want me to. And I'll instantly get two envoys. And we boost our uh, currency technology as well, right on time. See, we actually have two at Zanzibar now. See, we're not going to get this one anytime soon, so I think I'll start with a Tusha, also for that extra science boost. And that one also counts as two for now. Uh, and after we get our profit, I'll actually go back to that other policy. Because we're not going to need the one that we're currently using anymore. Now, the Hanging Gardens. I honestly think they would look really good somewhere around here. So I'm going to actually save up a little bit more money. Let's work on a granary for about two turns. Then we're going to buy one of these tiles. And that's where we'll make the uh, the hanging gardens. And that's going to look beautiful. Uh, but anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it here for now. In the next part, we're hopefully going to settle our third city somewhere down here. Uh, and after that, we'll probably try and settle one somewhere around here as well. Uh, just inch, you know, just creep a little bit uh, closer to... To Japan, uh, not too close because they'll get you know anxious, but a little bit closer. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm gonna be back soon with more Civilization Six.